Okay, so here is a problem. This is, I'm calling this space mission asteroid colon launch version one. So I'm gonna do a couple problems on this. Uh, this first one, I'm gonna make it as simple as possible. There'll be three, maybe four videos on this. Uh, so this is the first video. So here's the situation. I have a spacecraft uh, right here and it landed on an asteroid right there, not drawn to scale. And we need to launch the spacecraft and get it far away from the asteroid uh, using the spring. Because why why not use a spring? Wouldn't that be pretty cool, right? It's like one of those little spring toys that shoot up. Uh, and so we're gonna compress the spring uh, an amount S and then launch it off. And we want it to end up with some final velocity really far away. Let's just pick the velocity of um, 12 meters per second. And so the question is, I know if I know the mass of the asteroid, which I picked, 3 times 10 to the 12th kilograms, I know the radius of the asteroid, 1, 2, 3, 4 meters. Can you, can you tell that I made that up? And the mass of the spacecraft is 2, 2, 2, 2 kilograms, and the compression distance is 1.6 meters. So what spring constant do I need? Okay, so when you think of a problem like this, you should think of the two big ideas that we've looked at. And the first is the momentum principle that says F net, is the change in momentum divided by the change in time. And then we have the work energy, where work is the change in energy. And so the question is, which of those would be better to use? So if I want to use momentum principle, which I will in a later video, there's a problem, because as it goes from here to there, I, you know, what forces are acting on, this, on the spacecraft? Well, there's a spring pushing it this way, and the gravitational force pulling it back. But both of those change, so force is not constant. And the second problem is the time. How long does it take to get there? Well, I don't even know how far away it gets, right? I just want it really far away. So this is not gonna work uh, very well. I will make it work, because I care. So that leads us with the work energy principle. So if I have the work energy principle, it says the work done on a system is equal to the change in energy of the system. And I don't know what kind of energy I have until I define the system. So that's my first step. And But the key here is work energy does not depend on time. It de depends on change in position. So here I go from position 1 to 3. I call that 3. Let's call this 1. Um, because position 2 is actually right here when the spring is not compressed, right? When it released. And so it has some velocity. And so the spring will push it. It'll speed up and they'll reach this position and then it'll start moving away. But now gravitational force is pulling backwards and slowing it down. But we have these positions, one, two, and three. And so if I have positions, work energy is the best. But the first thing I need to do is define my system. So I'm going to say my system is a spacecraft. Ta plus the asteroid. plus the spring. So all of this stuff is in my system. So if all that stuff is in my system, what external interactions do work on it? They're none, right? They're none. So the work is equal to zero. That's really nice. And now since I have the spacecraft, I, have a, I can have a change in kinetic energy. So I can put delta K. And since I have the spacecraft and the asteroid, there's a gravitational interaction pulling them together. So I'll have a change in gravitational potential energy delta ug and since there's a spring in there and I can compress the spring I'll have a change in spring potential energy so let's define these things so kinetic energy is defined as one half m v squared gravitational potential energy is it's you can find this by determining the work done by gravity as you move over a distance um, but since it doesn't depend on path we can move it and make it a potential energy so it looks like this negative g mass of the asteroid, mass of the satellite over R, where R is the distance between their centers. And G is the gravitational constant. I should put it over here. G equals 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th newtons meter squared per kilogram squared. And then the spring potential energy is this. US equals 1 half KS squared, where K is the spring constant and the stiffness of the spring. Oh, here's the spring how stiff it is, and S is the amount it's compressed or stretched. So then I have, I have everything I need to do. So now the next question is, what do I do, right? Do I go from one to two, two to three? Uh, do I just go two to three? What do I do? Well, 
I don't really care about position two, right? I don't care how fast it's moving at position two. I could do that, and then I could do the, the work energy going from two to three, but I could just skip, skip step two. So let's just go from one to three, and let's write down this. Zero equals the change in kinetic energy, K3 minus K1, right? It's final minus initial, so that's the final kinetic energy minus initial, plus the change in gravitational potential energy, U, G3, that's a 3, minus UG1, plus a change in spring potential energy, US3 minus US1. Okay, one of these terms is 0. Uh, so if we think about this, actually two terms are. There's two terms that are 0. The first term that's 0 is K1. Because if I release this from rest, it's not moving at position one. So it has zero velocity. If it, the velocity is zero, the kinetic energy is zero. It is moving at K3 way really far away. Okay, so that's not zero. These are not zero because in neither case is, R, oh, and actually, I, changed, I take that back. If R gets really, really, really big, this potential gets really, really, really small. So if I say it's really far away, I'm talking about the time when the potential the final potential is essentially zero. And then we have one other term that's zero and that's this, US3. Because at position three, how much is the spring compressed or stretched? It's not, right? It's not even interacting with the spring. So there's no final spring potential energy. So I have zero equals, I'm gonna write these out, one half mass of the spacecraft, V3 squared, minus UG1, but UG1 is has a minus zero, so I'm going to say plus g mass of the asteroid, mass of the satellite, and then what's the uh, r value there? Well, it's the radius of the asteroid, so I'm going to just put capital R for the radius of the asteroid, r a, I guess. I put that there. And then I have minus the spring potential energy at the beginning, which is minus one half k s squared. Now, what do I want to solve for? I want to find the spring constant. So let's uh, move this term to the other side. I'm going to add 1 half ks squared to both sides. I get 1 half ks squared equals 1 half ms v3 squared plus g ma ms over ra. Now I just need to multiply both sides by 2 and divide by s, and I get it. So I get k equals multiply this by 2 over k, so it's going to be k, no, 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 divide by k, ms over k, wait, I'm dividing by s, s squared, ms divided by s squared, the twos cancel, the, I'm thinking ahead, that's my problem, I'm, I'm excited, I'm moving to the next step already, plus now I get 2g ma ms over R A S squared. Okay, now I can put in my numbers. I'm gonna put them in without units because I'm lazy. So I have M S is two 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 over S squared one point six squared. V three is twelve, so it's gonna be twelve squared, and then plus two times six point six seven times ten to the negative eleventh times the mass of the asteroid, 3 times 10 to the 12th, times the mass of the spacecraft, 2222, divided by RA, 1, 2, 3, 4, times S squared, 1.6 squared. So let's put that in the calculator. Time to bring, bring out the Franken calculator to see if it turns on. Nope. I need. I think I need new uh, gorilla tape on that. There it goes. Okay, so I'm just going to start entering in my stuff right here. Two, 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 two. Enter twelve squared times one point six squared divided by. Okay, so that's that first term. Now this next term I have two, and then I have six point six seven times 10 to the negative 11th times. And then I have 3 times 10 to the 12th, 3 e 12 times. And then I have 2, 2, 2, 2. 
times. Now I need to divide by 1, 2, 3, 4, divided by, and divide by 1.6 squared, divided by. Now I add those two together, and I get, well, that's really large. 1.25 times 10 to the 2, 4, 10 to the 5th newtons per meter. That's a little bit higher than I thought, but I think it's okay. That's the spring constant I need to launch it out into space and get far away with the final speed of 12. Okay, so I'm going to do another video on this, and it's going to be the same thing with one difference. And that'll be in my next video.